Okay, so I'll start again. Uh, working with agents and editors, very important. Um, obviously, the editor is the key person you need uh, to get started with a book because if you don't sell a book to an editor, it won't get published. Increasingly, uh, in this business, I think it's very important to have an agent. Because I am an agent, I don't want to push that side of the, the business too hard because uh, many people do sell books uh, directly to editors. So I'm going to try to balance the two equally um, because, as I said, I don't want to bias you in favor of agents. Uh, so let's talk about how to work with agents and editors. I think the first thing to remember is that um, agents and editors look at this as a business. Uh, when you are at a certain point in your editorial relationship with an agent or an editor, it's really a mix of uh, business and friendship and support and a lot of different things. But when you come right down to it, it's a business arrangement. And that's especially important to remember at the very beginning, um, even before the beginning, before you've actually made contact with uh, and been signed by an editor or an agent. So keep this in mind. Uh, there are a few things that you have to think about as you're moving forward with querying, with following up or not following up, and with presenting your manuscript to particular editors or agents that will uh, put you in the best light, the most favorable light, because uh, agents and editors look at a lot of things when they sign a manuscript. Uh, first and foremost is the manuscript, without question, I and mean, that's the most important thing. Uh, at the same time, there are a lot of subtle signals in query letters, in the different kinds of communication uh, that you have back and forth with someone. Um, someone mentioned Twitter a while ago. Uh, in the various comments that appear on social media um, sites. So you have to be very cautious about presenting yourself in a professional manner when it's a public forum. Uh, and public can be anything from the letter to me or the email to me talking about your manuscript and asking if I want to see it uh, to your Twitter account. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, so be very businesslike. Um, I, I used to say when I was speaking as an editor that I liked my query letters to be written as if someone was um, writing to their lawyer or their insurance agent. You know, just the facts, the basic facts, who you are, why you're writing to me, how to get a hold of you, and the specifics about the thing that you are writing about. And in this case, the thing, the fabulous thing, the thing you care so much about, um, the thing that makes it so hard to be professional sometimes because it's so important to you, is your manuscript. So your query letters should be very much, I, I like them short and sweet, and just enough detail so I know what I'm reading about, the genre, the age group, um, you might talk about books that are comparable, things like that. I don't want to spend a lot of time on query letters, but we do run into a lot of problems with them. Uh, so be very cautious with your query letter. Um, make it easy for the person to access all the information. Um, at my agency, we get about 60 queries a day, uh, and there are two people who are filtering those for things that are completely outside of what I acquire. And that brings me to another point about working with editors and agents. Do your homework. Very, very important. Um, find out what editors are acquiring. And this is where message boards, uh, publishers marketplace, if you can borrow someone's password uh, and username, which they don't seem to mind you doing, you can look and find out which editors are acquiring in which particular uh, genre or category. Um, and target those editors. And also, when you're writing to them, uh, be specific and invoke their most recent acquisition. Say, oh, I was very excited to see that you bought this young adult fantasy by, you know, X. Um, and so I thought you might be interested in this young adult fantasy that I have written. And then you go into your um, brief synopsis of the manuscript. But follow the guidelines. Virtually every agency and publishing house has have very specific guidelines to follow. Um, and they're there for a reason. 
Um, I know it seems really fussy and like we're making you jump through hoops, but if you consider the two people who spend many hours a day, um, all they're, they're doing is weeding out the stuff that is not something I acquire. Like, I don't work on high fantasy. I don't really work on science fiction. Um, I don't work on romance in the strictest sense of the category. Um, so what they're doing is just going through and sending a polite no to these people. Um, or if someone sends a query letter with um, an attachment, uh, they just have to kick it back to the person and say, you know, please look at the website and follow the instructions. And I know that seems really petty, but if we're getting 60 queries a day and you get 60 attachments rather than uh, the tw first 20 pages pasted into the body of the email, it takes a minute to open that attachment. And that's an hour out of this person's day, um, which is a long time when you think about it. So the guidelines are in place for a reason. So do your homework, find out who's out there and acquiring what. Very important, look for editors or agents who are brand new. And not necessarily brand new to the business, but brand new to the, their particular job. If someone has just moved from one job to another, uh, that is the perfect time to query them. Because uh, when you move from one house to another as an editor, or uh, if an agent opens up their own shop or moves from one agency to another, what they need to do is acquire up. They need to stock up and bring on as many manuscripts as possible to get their business going. So that is a really important thing to think about. That's a time you should always be looking at um, I know Harold Underdown does one, and there is, um, I'm forgetting the name of the website that talks about, uh, it's like the revolving door website for publishing. It talks about who's going where. Also, message boards are full of that kind of information. But always take note of where people are going, um, because once someone has moved to a new house, give them a week, and then query them. Really important. Um, okay, let's see. Um, this is a. This seems kind of strange to have to say this, but um, as a writer myself, I very much understand uh, the reason, the reasoning behind uh, some of the letters we get. Um, I'll preface this with saying, querying editors and agents is a really emotional process, and when you start to get rejections, it can really hurt after a while. It's it's impossible for it not to. Um, be very, very careful about letting that hurt or sort of feeling of defeat or even like a little anger seep into your query letters going out. Um, it happens a lot, surprisingly, um, that we get letters that have sort of an undercurrent of unhappiness with the current si situation in publishing, uh, the lack of response to their manuscript. Um, just. This is almost less business and more personal, but I would always look at every query, and you could say this for every opportunity in your life, every query as the one that's going to be accepted, and write your query letter with that in mind. Um, you know, it can't hurt. If nothing else, it will make you feel better while you're writing the letter, and it will give a better spirit, a better, better sense of, of what uh, you are like as a person, and, and most likely a truer sense of who you are as a person, if you try to stay really focused and positive in that letter, um, it's really, it's very important. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, now, protocol when you're working with editors and agents. Um, protocol when you have queried is a very tricky thing um, because I know, uh, I stay away from the message boards because I'm always afraid that I'm gonna see something uh, terrible about myself, but um, I know that you know a lot of times people will put on the message boards. I've been waiting forever, you know, to hear back from so and so, um, and it's really distressing me. Just keep in mind the workload that different editors and agents have. Um, if you look at how the industry has changed over the last couple of years, um, I was speaking to someone who was head of marketing at Little Brown for many years yesterday. And he was talking about the fact that now editors are, they barely have the chance to edit anymore. Most of their days are spent in meetings. And that was very true when I was editorial director at Simon & Schuster. The bulk of my day was spent 
you know, in going from one meeting to the to the next, and the time to edit or respond to people or read was 5.30 until whenever I left, or, you know, 7.30 in the morning until whenever the meeting started. So keep that in mind while you're waiting to hear about query, from your query letter. Um, and my opinion is it's not a good idea to follow up on a query. Uh, some agencies, some editors say, if you haven't heard from us in three months, consider it a polite no. Um, we try to respond to everyone. Uh, initially, when I first opened the agency, it was just me, and people were waiting. I mean, I know before I had um, some people working for me, they were getting to things that were a year old. So I know those people must have had some unhappy moments wondering what was going on. So keep that in mind while you're waiting. First of all, that people are not just busy, but totally overwhelmed. And uh, think before you query or re-query. Um, I think most editors and most agents don't really like someone to come back to the agent or editor and say, I'm following up on the status of my query of such and such a date. Um, because either they are the kind of, uh, they have said, if it's past a certain date, we're turning it down, or they are eventually going to get to it. Um, so I would avoid that, I think. Uh, it doesn't really work in your favor. There is one point at which you should always follow up on a query, uh, ra rather two, to be specific. If an agent has expressed real interest in your manuscript, you should let everyone you have queried know that this is the case. The same goes for an editor. If an editor has said, I want to see your manuscript, this sounds great, then you should let everyone else that you have queried know right away um, as, a, as a courtesy to them and also as a way to increase your likelihood of having someone sign you on or finding a publisher. Um, this has to be real interest though. Uh, you know, it really has to be, please send me your manuscript. Um, and the same goes as you move further down the line. Uh, if an editor or an agent says, well, if an editor says, this is great, I'm bringing it to acquisitions, that's when you let people know again, this is going to acquisitions. I wouldn't name the house. I would not be specific. Uh, you can be general. You can say it's a major house. Uh, if it's not a major house, but it's a reputable house, I would think of a way to spin it. Uh, like it is a medium-sized house that has a real emphasis on um, award-winning books and has a tendency to keep books in print for a long time. That phrase, keep books in print for a long time, that'll be right to the heart of every editor in a major house. Uh, because editors, uh, one of the problems editors at big houses run into is they sign things up they love the book, it goes out, it doesn't sell as well as it should, and um, uh, inventory and finance and all those sort of secondary, I shouldn't say secondary, those other groups besides editorial decide to put a book out of print. Um, there are a lot of medium-sized houses right now that will keep a book in print for a really long time. Ah, Mary Beth, good point. Uh, if someone asks to see your manuscript, I would let the other people you've queried know that you've had a request for a full from another house or an, another house or another agent. Okay. And again, the next step is if uh, that person wants to sign you, if they're an agent or as an editor they want to buy the book, you have to move really quickly and tell the other people, um, someone is taking my book to acquisitions. Uh, you know, they can move quickly on it or not. As an editor, whenever I got that kind of a message, I went right back and, you know, very quickly read the manuscript um, and to see if it was for me or not because I didn't want to miss out and would also respond quickly to say, okay, not for me, best of luck with the other house, or I love this, how long do I have? You know, when is this going to acquisitions? Because I'm going to have to, you know, really move this along quickly. Um, and that's a great situation to be in if you have a couple of editors who want uh, what you are offering. It's a great position to be in.